Hi, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching the Technique of the Month from Digital Photo Magazine. This month, I'm going to show you one of the oldest tricks in the Photoshop book, but one that will still impress anybody that looks at your pictures. It's called colour popping, and the effect is to make your image become a black and white picture, and then selectively bring part of the colour of part of the image back through. You'll see what I mean as we go along. Now for this tutorial we're using Photoshop Elements 3, but this will work just the same in other versions of Photoshop. The first thing you need to do is to open the Layers palette. So let's uh, have a look at the Layers palette by pressing F11 on the keyboard, or in the full version of Photoshop, F7. When you do, you'll have a screen that looks like this. You should have a single background layer with the picture that you can see on screen on it. What we're looking for on this palette is the small black and white circle. Now it might be at the top, it might be at the bottom, depending which version of Photoshop you're using, but whichever one you are, it doesn't matter. The technique is exactly the same. Click the black and white circle, and from the drop-down list, choose Hue Saturation. Now this box is used to control the colour within your picture. But we want to look at the saturation slider. Bring the saturation slider all the way to the left hand side. And as you do, you should see that the colour disappears and eventually we end up with no colour at all, just a black and white image. Then click OK. Now look at the layers palette. Can you see what's changed? We now have a bonus layer at the top, the hue saturation adjustment layer. And next to that we also have a little white square. Now this thing is a layer mask. And this is really where the power of this technique comes in. Let's go in really close to our image. Let's grab myself the zoom tool and I'm going to zoom in on the handle of the spade. Lovely. Okay, let's get a, a brush as well. Over the toolbar, pick up the brush tool. Um, size of brush, I think I'm going to go for one around about 100 pixels, a nice soft one. Now I need to make sure that I'm going to paint using black. Have a look at the colour wells. Now whatever colour you had in there before will have disappeared. In, in its place you'll have black and white squares. Now, I want to make sure I've got black as my foreground colour, so I need to swap them over by clicking the little arrows to swap those two round. Now I'm ready to go, so let's paint black onto our spade. And when I do, the most remarkable thing happens because it doesn't go black. In fact it's gone green. Now, if you can cast your mind back to the original picture, the handle of the spade was actually green. So what we're doing, by painting black, is to reveal the original colour that we started with. And we'll have a look and see what's happening in a moment. Let me just paint down the hand a little bit. That's lovely. Let's bring the layers back onto the screen. Here you can see on our adjustment layer, we have a very small black painted handle. By painting black onto the layer mask, what's happened is we've cut a hole in the adjustment layer and we can reveal the original image underneath. OK, let's move down the spade a little bit, keep going. Nice straight bit, that should be nice and quick and simple. All the way down, running out of room there at the bottom. So here's a, a neat little tick, a trick to move around the image. What you do is to press the space bar on your keyboard. That changes the tool temporarily to the hand tool and you can now drag about. So let's come down to the, the spade and we'll draw in over there. Let's get some nice red of that spade coming through. That looks nice and strong and bright. And all the way down the edges. Now I'm going uh, fairly quickly here for speed. Uh, you might want to take a little bit more care with yours because this is one of those techniques that um, if you put a bit of care and attention into it, the results will be far superior. Now there is another advantage of using an adjustment layer. Because if I accidentally go wrong and paint, for example, a bit of the beach, I get the colour coming through. Now I can change that straight away by swapping from black to white as my foreground colour and painting white on it. And all I'm doing there is removing the colour by painting white. So white removes colour to black and white. Black returns the colour to its original bright colours. Okay, let's move around 
Well, you couldn't have a spade without a bucket, of course. I'm one of these sad dads that uh, carries a bucket and spade in the boot of his car. Uh, you never know when you're going to end up on a beach. Um, unfortunately, the day I, I took this picture, we ended up on a pebbly beach. But that doesn't stop my daughter. These little things like that don't uh, slow her down at all. Of course, they also make for great photographic props. Always useful. Carefully do the handle of the bucket as well. Round we go. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Just about got it in. Managed to miss all the stones there. Uh, missed a bit of the bucket as well. Lovely. And moving brief, uh, briskly on, we have the shoes. Flip-flops. Essential items on a, a shingle beach. Uh, unless you have very hard feet, which I don't. Although, I should point out, these aren't my flip-flops. I don't have flowers on my pink flip-flops. OK, round we go. And over the strap. Now it's going to be difficult to get into that little tiny bit between the strap and the shoe, so I'm going to go for a smaller brush size. Changing the brush size, uh, use a keyboard shortcut. Use the left square bracket on the keyboard. That might take some finding. It's next to the P normally. Um, to make the, the brush smaller. And the right one to make it bigger. Change to white and paint in like so, change back to black and just tidy it up. Fantastic, and around we go. Bigger brush, do the tips of the shoes. Super, okay, there we go, that, that's pretty much it done. Uh, let's double click the hand to fit that back onto the screen, and there you can see the final effect. I think you'll agree, that looks really rather stunning. Let's have a look at the uh, the layers palette. Here you can see what's happened. You can see this silhouetted picture of a uh, spade, a bucket, and a pair of flip-flops. That's my own careful painting on there, over the top of the original image. Now that's pretty much it for this technique. You can print that picture off, and away you go. But this technique has one trick up its sleeve, because you normally see these black and white and colour, like that. But if you double click the hue saturation box, this time click colorize, you'll find you don't have a black and white anymore, you have a toned image. And you can change the toning by moving the hue slider. So if you want a sort of cold feeling one, not a problem, put in a bit of blue. Perhaps you'd like a bit more green, but I think I'm going to have more of a sort of sepia tone. Should find that around about there somewhere, that looks pretty good, sort of well, maybe bronzy sepia tone. Nice and warm feeling. And then just click OK. So there you go, there's a, a different looking picture just using a few clicks of the mouse. Now when it comes to saving your picture, if you have the space, save this image in a PSD file format. That's Photoshop's native format. That means that you will then keep the layer adjustment layer in place, and in times to come, you can double-click it, change it to a different colour, remove it altogether. In fact, change it however you wish. And that's it. That's your colour-popped image completed.